I am Caterina Fede, I am a biotechnologist and I work as a postdoc researcher uh, at the University of Padova at the Department of Neurosciences in the Institute of Human Anatomy. What are your primary areas of research? From 2016, I started to work with Carla Stecco about uh, fascia. Um, my role is to try to shed light about some cellular and molecular components of the fascia. What is the fascia made of? The fibrous component, the water component, the hyaluronan, uh, the innervation of the fascia, um, which are the cells of the fascial tissue and uh, how uh, the fascia can answer to different stimuli like mechanical, hormonal uh, or pharmacological stimuli. What is hyaluronic acid or hyaluronan? The hyaluronan is a megadalton glycosaminoglycan polymer. Uh, its role is critical to maintain the integrity of the extracellular matrix and um, is, it is synthesized by the cells and it is present in different uh, uh, parts of the body, in the skin, in the eye, in the synovia and also in the fascia. You can think about the hyaluronan like a sponge that is able to link the water molecules and so to hydrate the tissue. Uh, in, in the specific, um, in the fascial tissue, it permits the um, gliding of the sublayers of the fascia. By this way, the fascia is able to adapt to the um, muscular uh, change of vo volume and to the muscular movement. How much hyaluronin is present in fascia? The hyaluronan, the mean amount of hyaluronan inside the fascia is 35 micrograms per gram of tissue. Uh, it is less uh, respect to the skin or to the uh, synovia, for example. Um, and another interesting point uh, is that the amount of hyaluronan can change according to the anatomical size and to the different properties of that particular fascia. Um, it means that, for example, in the epimesial fascia that is very close to the muscle and it has not so much gliding properties, the hyaluronan is less, is 6 micrograms per gram. In the retinacula uh, that have a big range of motion, the hyaluronan is very high, is 90 micrograms per gram of tissue. So, uh, the mean amount is 35 in the panorotic fascia, but it can change according to the different properties of that particular fascia and to the, uh, according to the anatomic size of the fascia. Why is hyaluronin clinically relevant? The hyaluronan is important to hydrate the tissue and to uh, permit the, the movement, uh, the gliding of the sublayers of the fascia. If the viscosity of the fluid that contains the hyaluronan is much higher, um, there is a less uh, elasticity of the fascial tissue and so the, the, the fascial tissue becomes more rigid and there is much more stiffness. Um, if you search hyaluronan in the literature, you can find a lot of information and the hyaluronan can have also opposite roles according, for example, to the molecular weight. Uh, we can make like a, a short summary. If um, in a healthy homeostatic tissue, the hyaluronan is present in a high molecular weight molecule, that it means from 1,000 uh, kilo, 1, kilodalton to 6,000 kilodalton more or less, but in an um, inf inflamed tissue or in a tumoral tissue, it is present in low molecular weight molecules and it has opposite roles. It becomes pro-angiogenic, uh, pro-inflammatory, and also it helps the tumor to grow and to become a metastasis. How can you increase the production of hyaluronan? When we started to study uh, the fascial tissue, we noted some cells 
uh, that were different from the classical elongated fibroblasts. They were more rounded with a big nucleus and they stained a lot uh, to the stain specific for the glycosaminoglycans and for the hyaluronan. We uh, termed these cells fascia sites and they are uh, specific uh, um, cells of fascia that are able to synthesize the hyaluronan uh, rich matrix. And we note also that these uh, cells of fascia are able to modulate the synthesis of the extracellular matrix according to different stimuli, like the hormonal stimuli, for example. Uh, from the uh, last experiments, we noted that um, exposing the um, fascial cells in vitro to a cannabinoids, uh, these cells are able, in a very quickly way, to produce some vesicles that are rich in hyaluronan. So uh, we think that a, a drug like a cannabinoid can influence uh, the properties of the fascial tissue, changing the amount of, of the hyaluronan and changing uh, at least temporarily the properties of the fascial tissue. Can manual treatment influence the state of hyaluronan? We don't know exactly um, what happens when a manual physiotherapist apply a manual treatment to the fascial tissue, but we know that the viscosity uh, of the fluid that contains the hyaluronan can change a lot according to different uh, characteristics like the temperature, the movement and also the pH, for example. So changing, uh, applying a manual treatment, so changing the temperature or um, with the movement or also changing the pH maybe with the food, uh, we can alter the viscosity of uh, the fluid that contains the hyaluronan. And when the viscosity becomes uh, lower, uh, the, um, there is much more gliding and the, the tissue becomes more elastic and there is less stiffness. What is the relationship between pH, temperature and the viscosity of hyaluronan? We are studying this, this, this aspect, but um, uh, in the literature it's published that when there is an acid pH also um, for example 6.6 .6, there is an increase of the viscosity of the 20% so we think that changing in a basic way the pH we can reduce a little bit the viscosity but we are studying also this aspect of changing the pH and the temperature uh, of the water that contains uh, the hyaluronan in a physiological range so between 36 degrees to maximum 40 degrees, that is the temperature that the manual therapist can apply in the uh, local position when he, he makes it a treatment, or also changing the pH. And it could be interesting when there is an inflammation or when uh, uh, the person makes a lot of sport that can change the pH of the tissue. What avenues of research into hyaluronan are you currently pursuing? Now I'm studying how the fascial cells are, are able to, um, to answer to some stimuli like hormone stimuli, like uh, the drugs, like mechanical stimuli. And also another point that uh, in which we are uh, working a lot is trying to create a protocol to extract the hyaluronan from a fascial tissue and to study without uh, de damaging it and so to study the molecular weight because we don't know the molecular weight of the hyaluronan inside a normal healthy fascia and the pathological uh, fascia. What is the most important unanswered question about hyaluronan? It could be uh, like, could be the hyaluronan a new uh, therapeutic target in the next future because um, we don't know if the changing uh, the, pro the properties of the physical chemical properties of the hyaluronan, we can help uh, the person that have myofascial pain or the women that had pain correlated to the 
uh, woman period or uh, people suffering of spasticity or uh, also oncological patients, uh, we can um, try in the next future to change the properties of the hyaluronan with a mechanical application or also with an enzymatic application like using the hyaluronidases that is the enzyme that cuts the hyaluron and so changing the properties of the fluid. What will we know about hyaluronin in five years that we do not know now? I hope that in the next future we will know which are the stimuli that can change uh, the synthesis or the degradation of the hyaluronan. The hyaluronan has a rapid turnover. Uh, in the human body it is synthesized by three synthases and uh, there are also several uh, hyaluronidases that are able to digest the hyaluronan chains. And so it is important in my opinion to um, understand which are uh, the elements that can modulate or regulate the degradation or the synthesis of the hyaluron and it, it, it is important to understand uh, what happens in a healthy tissue and so what happens in a pathological tissue to try also to manage it much more better with the uh, treatments or with the lifestyle. What are the challenges of studying hyaluronan? As I said before, if you search for SimPubMed hyaluronan, uh, you can try a lot of things. Uh, if you also study the hyaluronan in cancer, you uh, know a lot of things and the paper said one thing and the opposite thing in the same time because uh, it's a simple molecule but so complex uh, it has uh, at least five six receptors in the cells so when a ligand uh, is attached to a receptor it can um, influence a lot of mechanic of uh, intracellular signaling and so a lot of answers and there is um, an equilibrium that can be changed uh, according to the synthesis the degradation and the also the receptors in uh, to in which the hyaluronan is attached so we have a, a lot of things to study, a lot of things to do about it. And it's not so easy when we study the hyaluronan in in vitro experiments because it can be degraded in a very, very easy way. Uh, we cannot extract it from a cadaver, for example, because uh, it's totally degraded. We are not able to see it very well. We need some fresh tissue. So for this reason, we have a collaboration also with the hospital and it's not so easy to, uh, to study it, but we are trying to do our best. <laughs>